right. Good morning. My name is uh, Dave Pickering. I'm the Vice President of Global Research for in the industrial manufacturing industry with Industrial Info Resources. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, one of the sectors that uh, makes up my industry, the automotive sector, which is arguably uh, the most important and, and largest of the sectors that I cover uh, across the globe. To start with, um, this chart basically is just giving you an idea of what's been going on with the automotive sector through the recession. Um, things were going great. The top line shows sales. The bottom line shows production. Both, uh, both of these are just in the U.S. Um, automotive sales had topped the 17 million mark pre-recession, and then they got slammed. Um, the on the production side, they'd come close to 12 million units a year. They hadn't quite made it, but they were there. And the recession hit. And as everybody knows, two of the three U.S. automakers um, had to go into bankruptcy, essentially, and were, were rescued by the government. Um, but they've made what is obvious from the slide a, a remarkable recovery over the last couple of years uh, with both sales and production reaching all-time highs in the U.S. Um, last year, at the end of 2015, they were just shy of hitting 18 million units in sales in the U.S., and they they were 100,000 units over 12 million on the production side. All indications are that in 2016, we're going to look at similar, if not slightly higher, sales and production figures in the U.S. Um, in 2017, or possibly the end of 2016, is when we're going to start to see things slow down a little bit. Uh, but we'll get to that a little more in another slide. Um, this slide shows spending as it's been occurring since uh, essentially the end of the recession. As you can see, they've been ramping up spending. And even though, as I mentioned earlier, two of the automakers had to go through recession uh, bankruptcy, they've come back with flying colors. And spending, thanks to those sales numbers, has been reaching some significant highs. Um, they are going forth with like gangbusters here. Most of it is not grassroots spending anymore, which was the pre-recession mentality. Now it's mostly retools, revamps, upgrades, expansions of their existing facilities. But as you can see, uh, in 2015, they topped 13 billion in uh, total spend, capex, as well as maintenance. And in 2016, we've already got 16 billion uh, in the planning stages. Now, whether that actually all occurs, and I'm sure it won't, uh, but they should see spending close to what they've seen the last couple of years, the 13, 14 billion range. And we already have another almost 6 billion uh, being planned for 2017 thus far. So things are going well for them, but they're also taking into consideration they know things are going to slow down in the next year to 18 months. So they're trying to get in all those projects now, sooner rather than later, um, so they're ready, even if things slow down, so they don't have to spend as much money. Um, our next slide shows the active, some of the top active automotive projects occurring in the US right now. Um, as you can see, more than half of these are currently under construction, which uh, falls in line with what I said a moment ago about the automakers uh, trying to get the bulk of their significant projects taken care of before sales start to slow. Um, but that's a lot of money that's under construction or in the engineering stage, if you look at the chart. I mean, there's only three projects on there that are still in the early planning stages. Um, this also gives a representation of where in the country they seem to be spending more money. The Great Lakes region is traditionally a automotive hotbed, um, and that will always remain an automotive hotbed. But in the last decade, many of the manufacturers have been experimenting with moving out of the Great Lakes, primarily to get away from the union contracts. And the Mid-Atlantic region, the southeast, and to a certain extent the southwest um, of the country, have 
seeing a significant growth in both facilities and spending, especially in the southeast and mid-Atlantic regions. Um, the two major projects in the Rocky Mountains are based on, those are actually both the Tesla um, battery plants that they're proposing to build. Uh, so while they are significant investments in the Rockies, the majority of the investment is farther to the east. Um, another key factor that has contributed to the upswing in not only spending, but sales and production in the U.S. has been international investment. Um, as you can see from this chart, in some years it's greater than 50% of the automotive spending is coming from companies with a foreign parent. Now, this has been made even more possible thanks to fiat purchasing uh, Chrysler back in the recession. So technically Chrysler is owned by a foreign company. So that accounts for a, a significant portion of the spending. But more importantly, we're seeing a lot of foreign investors coming in, especially on the tier supplier side of things, and investing their money in the states. As opposed to in the pre-recession days, we saw companies leaving the states and going elsewhere, especially to Asia. Now we're seeing some of those Asian companies reshoring and coming back, but more importantly, we're seeing more first-time investment from Europe from the tier suppliers and the automakers who are coming over here, like Volvo building their first facility over here, uh, Volkswagen built a facility over here, and that brings all of those tier suppliers that support that facility. So it's been a really interesting mix of foreign and domestic uh, spending that has helped keep the uh, CapEx numbers at the high rate they're currently sitting at. As I've mentioned before, 2016 is looking to be close to the same as what uh, we see have seen in 2014, 2015. And we've already got another five to six billion dollars in spending planned for 2017, although we're still anticipating uh, seeing that slow down a little bit uh, by, if not the beginning of 2017, by the end of 2017. So that's been a brief uh, discussion about what's been going on with the automotive sector in the U.S. If you have any additional questions, comments, or would just like more information or to chat, uh, please feel free to contact us um, through our emails which comes directly to me or call into our office and you can, we can have a chat. Um, and you can also contact us on Twitter, Facebook, and, and other uh, online multimedia uh, systems. Thanks for your time.